Back in the gold rush days of the mid-1800s, there was a desperate need to deliver stuff from the East Coast where everything was established to the new Wild West colonies over in California. Mail could take up to 25 days to make it from coast to coast, and you were never even sure if your mail would arrive. After all, mail couriers had to trek through the new frontier with plenty of ways to die. Which really puts into perspective the frustration we feel today for having to wait an entire day or two to get our Amazon order. Today, our delivery ecosystem looks a little different, and if we plot all of our different modes of delivering stuff onto a chart, from mega container ships to giant cargo planes, to our smaller and smaller vehicles from semi-trucks to delivery trucks to vans to cars and bikes for things like DoorDash and Uber Eats, it's not that hard to see where things are headed for one of the most important parts of our economy, just like what happened with electric scooters. When you'd say, well, we had planes on charter 25 years ago through NetJets. We eventually had smaller planes on charter. Then we had buses on charter. Then we had limousines on charter. Then we had cars on charter. Then we had cheaper cars on charter. Then we were pooling cars. Then we had bicycles. I mean, you literally did not have to be as smart as you to take that trail of breadcrumbs and say, well, what's the quantum of transport that's smaller than a bicycle, but greater than your feet? So what's a quantum of delivery that's smaller than a car and bike, but greater than your feet, and faster and potentially cheaper than both? Drones, which has led to one of the next great races in engineering, a multi-billion dollar race not for space, but for the skies. And with the US's new ruling to allow commercial drones to fly over humans and at night, this emerging industry is set to explode. Here's everything you need to know and to profit from the Great Drone Wars. Using drones to deliver your groceries, it will soon be a reality in Fayetteville. I don't know if I'm ready for that. Amazon's new drones could be ready to take flight. In the race to dominate the skies, Google's Project Wing now poised to bring deliveries to your driveway. Walmart's bigger goal is to one day see millions of items delivered by drones to your doorstep. This is Ehang's testing headquarters in Guangzhou, and this is their passenger drone that they're developing. It could even be flying in the skies in the next couple of months. For them, it's like a moon race. Yeah. But for the companies that deliver everything to you, this could have a massive impact quickly. Yes. Things could really start to move quickly now. You'll start seeing swarms of drones. It could be the drones, the, dr the drone swarm. <laughs> that, is, that is pretty serious. Imagine that flying over your city. Imagine at nighttime, all those little bees flying over your head uh -huh. and uh, unrestricted or restricted, but far less yeah. restricted. If you're the problem solver type that wants to profit off of revolutionary tech industries like drones, but you don't know where to start, that's where today's proud video sponsor comes in, Brilliant. Brilliant is a problem solving website and app that gives you the perfect introduction you need for industries like drones, AI, quantum computing, and more. Their 60 plus courses are all crafted by award winning teachers, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft, Google, and more. Where instead of sitting through boring lectures or textbooks, you actively put your brain through the paces for topics like classical mechanics, electricity and magnetism, machine learning, and a ton more. The faster and more effectively you learn, the faster you can participate in these cutting edge fields before the opportunities pass by. Join over 8 million people learning on Brilliant by going to brilliant.org slash jaketran to sign up for free. And the first 200 people that go to that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. That's brilliant.org slash jaketran with the link in the video description. Imagine a day when with a few taps on your phone, you order a burger. But instead of some pleb delivering it to your door by car, <laughs> The restaurant places your food on a drone, that drone takes off in the restaurant's launch pad, it flies over to you in a relatively straight line, way faster than driving through traffic, a retractable door on your roof opens up its landing pad, the drone drops off your burger in a box, and a tiny elevator brings it down to you for consumption. This is the dream of delivery drones, a dream that has largely remained a fantasy since the inception of commercial drones all the way back in 2006. That all changed recently with a new FAA ruling. Starting early 2021, companies will be able to operate their drones around people and at night with some regulations. With the biggest points being, the drone can't be over 55 pounds, the drone needs to broadcast a remote ID, basically a license plate broadcast via radio at all times, which will include the drone's serial number or a unique flight ID number, the latitude, longitude, altitude, the control station, emergency status, and time reference. Drones will also have to have anti-collision lights that can be seen for 3 miles to be able to fly at night and drone operators will have to have their pilot certificate on them while flying, like a driver's license. These rules will go into effect early 2021. 
and drone manufacturers will have 18 months to start making drones with remote ID. With this newfound freedom with regulations, the fastest growing transportation segment that's already had billions of venture dollars poured into it just got that much more exciting. Companies like Amazon, Walmart, and even Alphabet have been testing delivery drones for a few years now, but this new ruling is probably going to set them free to fight for who can be first, the first company to really roll this out to the mass market. If you can be the first company to make a viable drone delivery system, not only are you going to have the fastest delivery, but your company is going to get the most press, the most word of mouth, and the most hype. And for smaller startups, the most venture capital dollars. From 2008 to 2019, venture capitalists dumped over $4 billion into the industry. VC money has slowed down in 2020, but with this new ruling, I wouldn't suspect that to continue for very long. But perhaps most importantly, the first movers who get this tech working are going to have a massive head start to scoop up market share and to cement their throne at the top of the hill. We talk about the first movers advantage a lot on this channel, and this latest arms race in drones is no different. But this progress in the US market has some respectable competition. Around the same time, China also announced a new ruling regulating commercial drones. The specification for express delivery service by unmanned aircraft. Very catchy. With the biggest points being letting delivery drones have a higher payload capacity of 75 pounds, so they can deliver bigger and more things with a max speed of around 60 miles per hour. With the biggest advantage being that one of their tech giants, JD.com, have already been making drone deliveries for a few years now, with the latest being using flying drones and self-driving cars to deliver goods during the pandemic, when their usual transport lines were disrupted. The company has also already made 7 types of delivery drones that have had over 6,600 flight hours on over 100 routes ever since October 2015, while US companies have kind of been sucking their thumbs waiting for regulators. China is not too far ahead, but they do have a decent head start. Let's take a look at some of the most notable examples in the US. Amazon already has their Prime Air program in beta testing right now, where they're promising small deliveries in 30 minutes or less via their new drone. They're working with a handful of customers in the UK as we speak and will be slowly expanding their reach as time goes on. The, the person actually marks a little territory in their backyard with an Amazon bullseye so that the drone knows where to land. Supposedly, this has a, a sense and avoid technology built in, whether it's flying or landing, so it won't land on anything that you really care about. UPS is taking a slightly different approach. They've partnered with CVS and a hospital to target the healthcare industry. And instead of launching the drone from a warehouse, they have their drones deployed from the top of their trucks to deliver medicine, reducing the delivery time to minutes for important things like medicine and test results. Google's parent company Alphabet have their own drone startup called Wing, where they're kind of like a UPS or FedEx service, but with drones that target small business owners. Wing offers them a way to deliver small goods to their local customers exactly when they need it within six miles in six minutes. What's crazy is that they've already been operating relatively under the radar and have delivered tens of thousands of items in the US, Australia, and Finland. For the drone, it flies to the sender, sends down a container, the sender puts the package in, the drone pulls it back up, and sends it down to the customer. A lot of energy is spent lifting off and touching down, so this probably saves them a lot of juice. Google's drones carry packages beneath their belly, lowering them to people's yards with a tether while it hovers a safe distance above. Valkyrie is offering a solution to the last step in the drone delivery process, where the drone is going to land and take off from, and how to secure the packages for the right person. Think of it like Amazon's hub lockers, but for drones instead of delivery drivers. If you want to send something, you put it in your designated locked mailbox. The mailbox's elevator system brings it up to the top when the drone arrives, it aligns the package before attaching it to the drone, then the drone is off. Receiving packages is the same process but in reverse. The drone drops off the package at the top, and the elevator brings it down into the person's locked mailbox. I was doing research on electric airplanes recently, and the main reason they haven't taken off, no pun intended, is because of one simple limitation, battery capacity. It takes too many batteries which adds too much weight to make any meaningful flight with passengers or cargo. Drones run into a similar problem but to a lesser degree. As of right now, drone delivery is still more expensive than traditional transport, but drones today are still way cheaper than they were 5 years ago. On top of that, companies haven't had much incentive to innovate in this field since it was difficult to deliver near people and at night. 
With this recent change in the FAA stance and the heat coming from China, I personally don't expect drones to be more expensive than other means of transport for very long. Once it passes that threshold and companies see that they're losing more money by sticking with other delivery methods, it would be all up from there. Aside from the cost of the actual drone, there's still a lot of logistics to figure out. How is the aerospace going to be managed between all the different companies? What's going to be the backlash when a drone eventually crashes and damages property or hurts someone? But I have a feeling that if the profit margins are there, entrepreneurs will have no problem solving these issues. Oh, my boss would have my ass. And I'm crazy, I'm Jim. Get lost. You. Now, naysayers will always mock new ideas like these as unrealistic, that this could never happen, that there are starving children in Africa, and you greedy bastards want even faster delivery? Don't we have a social responsibility to take care of the needy first? Well, one, this has already been used to deliver medical supplies. And two, if I told you in the early 1700s that one day, we're gonna have these magical tubes that run all over buildings, where you can stick in a small canister of urgent mail, and it will be sucked up and set throughout an office or multiple buildings in a matter of seconds. And oh yeah, it's gonna be powered by air. You would look at me in the same way people look at today's radical ideas. And yet, pneumatic tubes were widely adopted and are still used today in some places. Just like how it took smartphones a few generations to be good enough for the majority of people to adopt them. So we've had smartphones as a new form factor happen, and they were expensive, but they only took, I would say, like three to four years before most people were looking to get a smartphone. Delivery drones will go through the same thing. We're practically in the first generation of delivery drones. So it's no longer a question of whether or not it's possible. That's already been proven. The real question is, when will we reach the point where this becomes profitable? When this becomes practical? Is it the second generation, the third, the fourth? Time will tell. But once that happens, the innovators, the open-minded will make money. And the naysayers will be left behind sucking their thumb while they get drone deliveries themselves. If you want to be a part of those innovators pushing the world forward and getting paid very handsomely for it, why not check this out? It's a lesson on the physics and mechanics of drones, specifically the drone battery problem. This lesson is from Brilliant, the problem-solving website and app that lets you dive deeper into topics like these in a fun, approachable way. This drone lesson is from their main course on classical mechanics, which is filled with 49 interactive lessons just like this one. When you join Brilliant, this is what it looks like. You get to cherry-pick the individual topics you want to learn, or if you want a more guided approach, you can choose from one of their popular learning paths like Applied Computer Science, Probability Statistics, Advanced and Applied Science, where Brilliant recommends you which courses to take in which order to get the best understanding of a broad field. For me, I think it's smart to have a general understanding of a ton of different fields and industries so I can see what the next major trends are and potentially jump on them. So I really like that I can just log on to Brilliant and know that I'm getting a great baseline understanding on all these different cutting edge topics to see if I want to pursue them further. It's a one-stop shop. So if you want to do the same or check out that drone lesson, join over 8 million people learning on Brilliant by going to brilliant.org slash jake to sign up for free. And the first 200 people that go to that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. That's brilliant.org slash jake with the link in the video description. Do you guys like these style of videos where we go over upcoming trends in the business world that you guys can potentially profit off of? If you guys do, you can let me know by tapping that like button down below. That way I can get a gauge on how much interest you guys have. And it's also very helpful for the YouTube algorithm. Speaking of YouTube, if you are new to this channel, we go over the most thought provoking, controversial, provocative stuff in the world of business every single week in this form of video essays. So if you want more of them for free every single week, make sure you subscribe down below after you click that like button. If you want only the best business memes, behind the scenes stuff, day in the life kind of stuff, me complaining about stuff, you can follow me on Instagram at jaketrend.io. We have a ton of fun over there. If you wanna be the first to see these videos, you can sign up for the email notification squad with the link below. That way you get emails every single time a new video posts. You can support this channel financially by checking out today's sponsor. That is gonna wrap up today's video. Stay dangerous out there, and I will see you guys in the next one.